Hello my Sock Universe! What a penalty shootout that was! Whoa! Haven't seen something like that in a long time, if not ever. And so we have the underdog, Villarreal winning, and I would, would even say not entirely undeserved. Um, if you watched my preview of that final, um, I got the final result wrong. I said Cavani will score. He did. I said Villarreal scores early in the first half. They did. United typically scores in the second half. They did. I expected a low scoring game. It was. It was not an exciting final. So I got a few things right. I just didn't get the winner right. Um, I was even thinking yesterday, but I said, no, nah, this is too much work and how will I do it? Shall I put the chances of overtime in there? Because I actually saw this. I said 2 0 United because I thought against my better judgment. Um, United has been steamrolling Spanish teams in this competition, so yeah. I was thinking of putting the probability for overtime in there, but you know, didn't happen that way. But we're not talking about, you know, what about I got, I got wrong and right. Um, it was a very, yeah, it was a typical final. It was not a great game. Um, the early exchanges were for me characterized by VRL being kind of nervous, United being a little bit more active, but really not having, I don't know, I don't want to say the tools, because they have to have tools, but they didn't have the right strategy of how to break down a Villarreal team that was initially really defending um, deep. And it was just two uh, shots from a wide range. And then, but you know, somewhere around the 20, 20th, I got the feeling that uh, now Villarreal is getting, is really controlling the game and they do everything that uh, in what their capabilities to kind of stop United from um, being a little bit faster, being a little bit more speed. And United did do nothing to actually let Villarreal come. I, I, I really thought once Villarreal had settled their nerves, uh, they said, yeah, we have a game plan that we executed to, to a T. And I have found United rather, you know, without guidance. Yeah, we have brilliant players. And with those brilliant players, we're going to beat Villarreal. No, it was not that, really not that. And I found it very, very, very curious because you you, you see the frustration growing. And, and it was uh, when Cavani... Uh, fouled kind of in the middle of the park and then was complaining or already and of course Bruno Fernandes was always complaining when even if he's not involved I uh, was also around there and there's a free kick uh, given that Dani Parejo takes deep and Gerard Moreno although being clearly pulled by Lindelof and I'm actually quite certain if that wasn't having a goal would have been a penalty for Villarreal clearly pulled by Gerard Moreno who I don't know, Parejo Moreno, take your pick who is the best player of Villarreal. Uh, both are combining and Moreno puts it into internet with the first real chance of the game. Uh, and then I had the feeling up until late in the first, first half, Villarreal had that game pretty much in the back. Uh, they had United exactly where, where, where they wanted. The only thing is they did not really go for the second goal. But you know, did they need to? If you keep it tight that that way, I thought it was a little bit a little bit of gamble. Very late, uh, late on, there was a chance where I think it was a hard cross in, and uh, from Greenwood, where Raúl Al 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 on you know with a lower belly, upper thigh is kind of blocking it to a goal, 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 goal with a little bit uh, bad, bad like this could go a uh, good, good, good gun in, and yeah. Well, it wasn't great to have a few spectators there as well. I have, I had had the argument yesterday. I actually got a little bit used to having no spectators because I actually like how the players are communicating maybe with each other. I mean, once you get get over that, yeah. But on the other side, it is better if there are people there. It definitely is better. It doesn't look good if the stadium is only like quarter filled, but it looks there definitely better. Second half, right after the half, I uh, half time, I th there was. A big confusion within the United box where I think if Villarreal is a little bit more level-headed and a uh, bit more calm, they could have scored there. But contrary to the first, first it was the United who uh, for the first and I want to say the only time really put some pressure on Villarreal and it resulted after cor uh, corner kick with that it was not very very well, well clear that Cav uh, Cavani gets the equalizer. I think McTominay takes a shot and it's a little bit ping pong and um, 
Cavani falls right there, it's not offside and he gets the equalizer. And then uh, for a little bit, you know, let's say 10, more, 10, 50, 50 more minutes, I thought that United will not turn this game, this game around because the momentum was clearly on their side. And I had the feeling that VRL is just barely hanging on. However, VRL again could settle the game and very late on they actually had the chances as well. And it was, I think from the 70th minute on, I found it rather inevitable that this will go to overtime. Not that I really want to have that because I was barely hanging on. <laughs> The game was not very uh, exciting and overtime really didn't help at all in that because overtime uh, it, it was not very cohesive. I think the biggest scene was again uh, one of those where Villarreal, I thought in overtime Villarreal was a slightly more dangerous and better team uh, and Villarreal then yeah had a little bit more, they had this one chance where they have three VRL players, but all of them cannot play a proper pass to each other. Then the ball lands on the hand of Fred, which I think was okay that this was not the all given penalty. It was a similar situation in the second half uh, that could have gone for United. So yeah, um, penalties were inevitable. The one thing that really, really surprised me is Una Emery made exchanges that were actually really working well for, for the team. He brought Coquelin for Baca when, he's, when, he, when he saw that United is really exerting a lot of pressure. Take one of the um, strike strikers off, make the middle of the park a little bit tighter. Then uh, when he said, yeah, we have the game going well, brought on um, uh, Paco Alcasa, you know, have another striker in there. Um, Mio Gomez is come, come, come for, uh, for, for Trigueros. So, you know, uh, it was actually quite... The changes were actually make, make, making a lot of uh, sense. Ole, Gona Solskjaer, no changes until the 100th minute. And, that, and then you hear uh, in the post game that, yeah, I could name so many players that have been injured and wobbling around. I'm sorry. Use the changes. I mean, it's not that. Uh, you uh, you clearly need need in this park, and if you go into the hundred, it was a little bit late. Then he brings on Twan uh James Tejas, and Mata. Uh, the last two clearly for the penalty shoot, 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 but it, it was a little bit too late for for for, for, for me. I think um, you could see again. Una Emery had a match plan. His players, for the most time, were executing that one to a T, and they controlled the game. And I always said, if Villarreal will be able to slow down and control the game, then Villarreal has a good shot at winning this one. Well, they didn't win it. It went to Pam Pam Pam. Where did they won it? Uh, United will have, have a chance if they can uh, keep the game, can hit... Um, uh, VRL with quick incisive count, count, count race and kind of get them a little bit tour to them and get them ready. They never could do that. And so it goes to penalties and honestly, what can I say? We saw 22 penalties and the first 21 all went in. And the funny thing is that I, especially from the VRL side, the penalty kept getting better and better the more the game, uh, the Pechush, the Schulet went on. Um, I really thought that, I mean, we are all having the advantage of going first. Uh, and I have to say, the first penalty that was kind of wobbly was Paco Alcázar, the, the, the third one for Villarreal, where um, yeah, the hair was there. The hair, I rewatched re it, the hair was five times in the right, out of the 11 in the right corner, whereas Rulli was six times out, uh, out of them on the corner. But the hair had, had a chance maybe to save Alcázar, but maybe not. And he got his hand on the ninth penalty, but uh, Gaspar put it um, kind, of, kind of middle high and, you know, this wall, wall, wall was not really a safe. But I really have, have had to say that the eighth penalty by Cochlear, the eighth penalty, that was probably the best of them all. Why is this guy not going sooner? I mean, uh, Paco Alcasa is this uh, sort of safe uh, penalty taker, though. Uh, his was wo wobbly. I even thought that most of the others, Michel Moreno, uh, if the goal is in the, the hair is in the, uh, on the right side, this is pro probably safe. So uh, it was really amazing. And then the second best to me was actually Rulli himself to make it 11 10. On the United side, as I said, see, um, there were. Two where uh, uh, Rulli got his uh, hands on. The Bruno Fernandes one, he probably 
should say because this was not very well placed and I also thought the, the, thought the one by Luke Shaw uh, what he also had there and then he tipped the one by Lindelof and when I saw Lindelof I really thought he he will miss um, I actually thought or or already with Twan say but it will go down no it was then De Gea who uh, takes it with the inside of his foot doesn't place it very 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 well and Rulli saves it and an epic penalty shootout ends with Villarreal winning their first ever title First ever title for Villarreal. Just let that. And a decade ago, they were actually the second uh, in the in the in the Segunda for a while. So you know, lots of feel good stories there from the Villarreal side. I think that United definitely have to ask themselves questions, uh, especially when it comes to management. I have to say that if our superior team. And you cannot bring this onto the pitch. This is down to the coaching. That's all I want to say. But yeah, congratulations, Villarreal. I'm quite... I'm pleased with the outcome, uh, to be honest. Um, they have had a really good run in this Europa League and in a way deserved winning the Europa League. And I always like it when a team that actually starts in the Europa League also wins the Europa, Europa League. But uh, as it comes to United, yes, you can point to a second place finish in a kind of in a, in a league where like a Liverpool definitely was hampered and also Chelsea had the wo wobbles where United were consistently good, but not great. And then you have the exit in the Champions League that you really messed up yourself. And now a Europa League final when you were actually looking really, really good in the entire competition. You only had a wobble maybe a little bit against Milan. But other than that, United looked uh, rather dom dom dominant. So I have to say, if I was a United fan, I would be severely disappointed by that season despite finishing second. But yeah, we are Real fans, of course, will be super happy. I mean, first title of the season. And, 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 and it's a European title. And the last thing I need to say is that uh, Una Emery wins his fourth Euro, uh, Europa League, UEFA Cup. Slash U U U UEFA Cup now. He is the uh, only manager to have done so. Uh, uh, Giovanni Trapattoni had three. Now he is by, alone by himself. And, you know, if you ever take a record from Trapattoni, that's also not that bad. And final note, Spanish teams con uh, continue their dominance over English teams in the Europa League. I think the last one where an English team won against the Spanish team in a final was Liverpool against Alaves, that crazy 5-4 overtime silver or golden on goal game. In any case, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know what you thought about this game. Subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to see more videos like these. We have a new Europa, Europa League season coming. I even don't, don't know what, what I will do with the conference league. I want to cover it, but since it's all played on Thursday, this will this will be a bear <laughs> to actually uh, cover all, but I will do my best to do so. And in any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!